In previous videos in the Quantum Mechanics playlist, we saw the Pauli X and the Pauli Z gates. If you take the square of X, this is equivalent to the identity. If you take the square of Z, this is also equivalent to the identity. If you sandwich X and Z between two Hadamard gates, this is going to produce Z over here and X over here. So the Hadamard gate allows us to translate between the eigenbasis of Pauli Z and the eigenbasis of Pauli X. We're moving between the language of phase flips and bit flips. So Pauli X can be thought of as a bit flip and Pauli Z can be thought of as a phase flip. And you can see that these relationships allow us to undo this transformation. In this video, we're going to investigate the square root x and the square root z gates. Their defining property is that if you take their square, you're going to get x and z respectively. And if you sandwich the square root of x, and the square root of z between two Hadamards, you're actually going to get the square root of z appearing over here and the square root of x appearing over here. So these two relationships are analogous to these two relationships. We're translating between x's and z's. What does this actually mean? We're saying that if you apply these operators twice, it is equivalent to applying these operators. That is what is meant by the square root of a gate. So we're looking for operators such that if you apply these operators twice, you get Pauli X and Pauli Z. Because these operators can be thought of as two by two matrices. And these two by two matrices are going to multiply column vectors with two entries. So we're taking these operators and we're acting on qubit states. So that is what we're actually describing over here. And we know that this is a bit flip and that this is a phase flip. So we're looking for something that does half of a bit flip and half of a phase flip. And in previous videos, we've actually seen a gate that satisfies this property. And we called it the S gate. So let's have a look at gates that satisfy this property first. So we're looking at the square root of Z. We can write that as the root of z is equivalent to a phase shift gate. And we're going to take entries plus or minus pi on 2. And I'll write this as a matrix representation so it is more clear what this notation is telling us. We can write this as a diagonal matrix with entries 1 and e to the plus or minus i pi on 2. The off diagonal entries are 0 because this is a diagonal matrix. So this is a phase shift gate evaluated at two specific angles. So we could put a gen general angle over here, phi, but we're choosing two angles. We're choosing plus or minus pi on two. And if we think back to the unit circle in the complex plane, we can evaluate this as plus or minus i. Because on the unit circle, this actually corresponds to a quarter cycle rotation. So for the plus case, we're going up to plus i. And for the minus case, we're going down to minus i. So this is, again, a diagonal matrix with entries 1. And now we can evaluate this as plus and minus i. And here we have 0, and here we have 0. We can write this in terms of ket bra notation. So we have a ket 0 and a bra 0. And then we have plus or minus i times ket bra 1, 1. So this 0, 0 corresponds to this entry, and this 1, 1 corresponds to this entry. And the mixed terms, 0, 1, and 1, 0, are 0 over here. They don't appear in this representation because they are 0 in this matrix. We have a diagonal matrix over here. So if we take the plus case over here and ignore the minus case, we can denote that as the S gate. And the S gate is a type of phase shift gate. And if we take the Hermitian adjoint of the S gate, 
we can denote that as s dagger. And s dagger is equivalent to the minus case over here. We have 1 and minus i. So these gates both satisfy this relationship. If you apply this gate twice, which is equivalent to squaring this matrix, you will get the Pauli z. And how can we see that just by looking at this? Well, if we square this matrix, because it's diagonal, we just need to square these entries. And if you square plus or minus i, you're going to get minus 1. So it doesn't matter if it's a plus sign or a minus sign over here, this i ensures that we get minus 1. And the diagonal matrix with entries 1 and minus 1, that is the Pauli z gate. So we've seen this representation over here. Now let's use these properties over here to try and find the square root of x. So first, let's write these in terms of Pauli matrices. Let's express this in terms of Pauli matrices. So we can take this combination, this 0, 0, ket, bra combination in Dirac notation, and we can write that as the identity plus z over 2. And then we can take plus or minus i times the identity minus z over 2. And if you write this out in terms of matrix representations, take the sum and the difference, and then divide by 2, you will see that you get exactly the same matrix representation as this and this over here. So this corresponds to this top left entry, and this corresponds to the bottom right entry. Now let's do some rearranging, and we can notice that if, if we look at this identity and this identity, we have one half as a coefficient here, and plus or minus i times a half. So we're going to get one plus or minus i over two times the identity. And what about this Pali z? Well, the only difference is this plus or minus gets multiplied by a minus over here. So we're going to have to flip it, and it's going to turn into a minus plus. So we're going to have plus one minus plus i on two, and then we have Pauli z. So you can see that these are the two possible cases. We could either pick the plus case over here, and that would correspond to a minus appearing over here, or we could pick the minus case over here, and that would correspond to a plus appearing over here. So this is the square root of z, or the two possible uh, gates that, could, that satisfy this relationship. Now, let's take this square root z and sandwich it between two Hadamard gates. And if we sandwich it between two Hadamard gates, we're going to get the square root of x, or the square root of the not gate. So I'll write that underneath. If we take, so we want to find this square root of x, so we have to sandwich the square root of z in between the Hadamard gate. And what is that going to give us? Well, if we sandwich this between the Hadamard gate, we put a Hadamard over here and a Hadamard over here, that's going to give us 1 plus or minus i on 2 times h i h. So we're sandwiching this between a Hadamard, and we can distribute those terms in. So we have a h coming from the left and an h coming from the right. And then for this term, we're going to have uh, 1 minus plus i on 2, and then we're going to have h z h. But have a look at these two relationships. This identity is not going to do anything. So we can get rid of the identity, and then we're just going to have h times h, which is h squared, and that is exactly the same as the identity. So this turns into the identity, but this turns into x. That's from this relationship over here. We can translate z into x by sandwiching it between two Hadamards. So what are we going to get? We're going to get the following relationship. We're going to have 1 plus or minus i on 2 times the identity, and then we're going to have 1 minus plus i on 2 times Pauli x. So you can see it has an analogous form. The square root of x has this form, and the square root of z has this form. The only difference is a z and an x appearing over here. So this is the beauty of the Hadamard gate. It allows us to see these analogous relationships between Pauli x and Pauli z. Let's write this as a matrix representation. We've seen this guy as a matrix representation, but let's have a look at this. So the identity matrix has diagonal entries, and they're both ones. But Pauli x has off-diagonal entries. So this is going to appear on the diagonal, and this is going to appear on the off-diagonal. And I'll write that underneath. We're going to get, I'll factor this one half out the front. 
So we have one half, and on the diagonal, we're going to have one plus or minus i, and then one plus or minus i. And on the off diagonal, we're going to have one minus plus i, and one minus plus i. And if you take the square of this matrix, you will get the Pauli x matrix. So another very important uh, thing that we can do with this matrix is we can, we can actually write it in a different form. We can identify that this combination over here can be written as a complex exponential. We just have to divide by the square root of 2. And if we do that, we'll have to multiply and divide by root 2. So we can put an extra root 2 on the outside and then divide by root 2. And that's going to allow us to translate into the language of complex exponentials. So this is going to turn into e to the plus or minus, because we have a plus or minus sign over here, plus or minus i times pi over 4. So this is not the same as a quarter cycle. So a quarter cycle would be 90 degrees. This is half of that. So that's the angle we're dealing with over here. So it's actually a diagonal on the complex plane. So imagine you have a diagonal over here and a diagonal over here. So those are your plus and minus cases. Because the imaginary axis is vertical and the horizontal axis is the real axis. So if we take uh, one step along the real axis and one step along the imaginary axis, we're on a diagonal line. And we have to shrink back down to get to the unit circle. That's why we have this factor of square root of 2. Because we need to divide by root 2 inside and that means we have to multiply by root 2 on the outside. So that's what's going to happen over here, and we're also going to get that on the diagonal. We're going to have plus or minus i pi on 4, and on the off diagonal, we're going to have the reversed sign. So we're going to have e to the minus plus i pi on 4, and e to the minus plus i pi on 4. So this is another way to write this gate. And what you can notice is that you can actually take out a common factor. You can take out a phase factor, and you can put that phase factor as a coefficient out the front of this matrix as well. So there are different ways you can write this square root of the x gate. But notice that there are two possible cases. You have a plus case and a minus case. And both of them will satisfy the following relationship. If you take this matrix, if you square it, so if you square this, you're going to get the matrix representation 0, 1, 1, 0. And this is equivalent to the Pauli x gate. So in this video, we have seen a gate that satisfies this property and another gate that satisfies this property. We started by analyzing phase shifts and we saw the phase shift that can be applied twice to get a phase flip. So you can think of it as a half phase flip. This is a half phase flip. And this over here, this is half of a bit flip. And we found this half of a bit flip by using the Hadamard gate to translate between the language of phase flips and bit flips. We also saw some different matrix representations. We represented it in this form, and we also represented it using complex exponentials. Either way, if you square this matrix or if you square this matrix, you will get this anti-diagonal matrix, this off-diagonal ma matrix with entries 1, 1 over here and 0, 0 along the diagonal. And it will satisfy this property. So if you square it, you will definitely get Pauli x. Just like if you square this matrix, you will get Pauli z. So these are single qubit gates. And you can apply them to the state of a single qubit. This is very useful in quantum information. You can find other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.